Hey, let's spend a little bit of time talking today. We've had this channel up for a few months. It's gained some popularity. Well, thank you. That's good. And what's interesting is that I created it for dentists and we have patients or potential patients who are looking at this as well. Not potential patients for us. It's patients who are interested in in some alternatives or maybe some different ideas. So for those of you who are watching, let's start off with this. There are way too many teeth that are being extracted. Yeah, way too many teeth. People are told, oh, you've got periodontal disease. You've got to lose your teeth. You better lose your teeth or you won't have enough bone for dental implants. All total baloney. You know, here's what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of decay. A patient has rampant decay, eats a lot of sugar. I can't do a lot for that person. You know, I'll, we'll repair the teeth. We'll do all the things we need to do. And if the person is eating sugar or has a highly acidic mouth, those teeth will rot no matter what we do. And I don't want to waste a patient's time, particularly money, because dentistry costs a lot of money. I don't want to waste the money on teeth that I know are going to rot anyway. Those are the patients that I'm much more inclined to do dental implants on. Now, if you have a little cavity, of course, yeah, we'll treat that. But if we're talking about rampant decay, meaning a lot of decay, no. No, no, no. You know, we can ask a patient to do better, eat less sugar. You know how successful I am at doing that? Well, if I am successful, I'm not sure that <laughs> that I can quantify that success. But, you know, periodontal disease is a totally different thing. People who get their teeth extracted due to periodontal disease get their teeth extracted because the dentist has made the choice to extract the teeth or the patient has made the choice to extract the teeth. It doesn't have to be that way. Now, if the teeth are so loose that you can wiggle them, and every time you bite down, it's like you have a, a loose tooth when you're a kid. Yeah, that tooth has to be lost. A tooth that has a, an abscess, an abscess where there's decay that's gone into the nerve, and the nerve is now <clears throat> all full, filled with bacteria. The bacteria is spilling out the end of the root, destroying the bone. Well, that tooth either needs a root canal or that tooth needs to be extracted. But if the patient has some bone loss and you can't wiggle it and it's perfectly comfortable to bite down on those teeth, why wouldn't you save them? We've been saving those kinds of teeth for years. If the tooth is not loose, you don't have to extract it. Now, you might say I've gone to a periodontist. The periodontist agrees that all the teeth need to be extracted. Well, I just want you to do the mobility test, if the teeth can't be moved and you say, I don't want to extract my teeth, then find somebody who won't extract your teeth. Just find somebody. Maybe the minority. And it may be another period, honestly, you have to see. Teeth can be treated. Teeth can heal. Or the bone around the teeth can heal. And just because you've lost bone in the past doesn't mean you have to lose bone in the future. And let's assume the worst-case worst scenario. You save a few teeth and you hold on to a partial denture rather than have a denture that's floating up and down that you've got to hold in with stick them. Instead, it clip a partial denture to some teeth. Which do you think is better? Something with clasps that's going to be held by the teeth? There's something that would stick them that's going to be held in by glue. Here's another statement that's true. An upper denture is easier to wear than a lower denture. And so if a person chooses to extract teeth, extracting teeth on the upper arch and wearing an upper denture is easier. Why? Because the denture has a palate. It has this soft tissue that's supported by bone and there's a bigger denture bearing area and the denture acts like a suction cup and can hold that upper denture in place. Yeah. Okay. Do you need to stick them sometimes? Yeah. It depends upon what the palate's like. I suppose it depends a bit on the quality of the denture as well. Uh, if you have a flat palate, it's more difficult to wear than if you have a horseshoe-shaped palate. 
But if there are teeth there, and the teeth aren't mobile, then frankly, it's more comfortable to have those teeth to chew on and supplement with a partial denture. Put that partial denture in place. Oh, you're afraid the teeth won't last. Well, that has to do with the quality of the periodontal treatment and your ability to take care of your mouth. Okay, so let's talk about saving teeth. What do you need to do to save teeth? Number one, do you need to evaluate them? Number two, you need a well-qualified periodontist and a periodontist hygienist in order to be able to take, the, take care of these teeth properly. Are antibiotics sometimes necessary? Yeah, because this is an infection. Yes, I'm all for retaining the microbiome, but I'm also not saying don't prescribe antibiotics in an aggressive case where you've lost a lot of bone. See, if you lost that, and then you may have an aggressive bacteria which we can test for. And you can remove that bacteria from the system in order to begin healing. Now, the second part of this is to be able to take care of the root properly. The root is filled with caked on calculus. Calculus is toxic in and of itself. Calculus is hard and it's embedded into the root surface. It has little holes like Swiss cheese and that holds bacteria within it. But even if the calculus was sterile, the calculus would still be toxic. And so thorough removal of the calculus is really important. And frankly, if you've got a pocket that's more than four millimeters, that's pretty difficult to do. Studies have shown that's impossible to do. Except by doing surgery and visualizing the area, or more importantly and more predictably, being able to use an endoscope which goes below the gum line, which magnifies the root 40 times so you can see the root surface and get the root surface clean. Cleanliness is important. We've got to get rid of that calculus, as much of that calculus as we possibly can. We'll never get rid of all of it. But if we get rid of most of it, a good deal of it, the, the patient has the opportunity to heal. And part of that is visualizing the root. Part of that is the hygienist having enough time. Part of that is the hygienist having enough talent to be able to clean that root surface and clean that root surface thoroughly and properly. And there are even some new chemicals, actually old chemicals, that help clean the root even better. The chemical is called EDTA, and it comes in a form called Pref Gel, and the research is out. It's been fantastic in helping our patients get our root surfaces clean. So if a person can disinfect the area, needs antibiotics if necessary. By the way, do some tests. So if a doctor tests and finds out there's an aggressive bacteria, fine, use an antibiotic. Please use an antibiotic. And if the root surface needs to be cleaned off, and it usually does, then make sure you have the best root preparer you possibly can to get that root totally clean. And the endoscope helps. Talent helps, but the endoscope helps our talent work better because with the endoscope, the root is magnified 40 times and the hygienist gets to see things that she or he would never see otherwise. But what's the upshot of that? The upshot of that is the patient keeps his or her teeth. And when a patient keeps his or her teeth, is far more comfortable to chew, far more comfortable to smile, far more comfortable, period. Find the most talented people you can. And you're going to have some opportunities to save teeth in comfort and in health for many years. One more thing. If you have a full dentition, if you have all your teeth, make every effort to save those teeth don't extract and replace unless you absolutely have to. And most of all, if a person has periodontitis, do not condemn the teeth if they're not loose. Treat them. Treat the infection. The body will heal. The vast majority of cases, the body will heal. And when the body heals, you retain your teeth and you don't have a prosthetic appliance in your mouth. It's more comfortable.
It's cheaper. Take the opportunity to really evaluate. Don't rush. Doctors, don't rush. Patients, don't rush in extracting teeth, particularly if they have periodontitis. They can be treated. And if you can't treat them, somebody in your area can. Keep your teeth. It's coming from somebody who's kept patient's teeth for over 40 years. And let me tell you, it can be one of the most satisfying experiences both for doctors and for patients. For people like you. Saying, you know, he gave me a shot. She gave me a shot. I took the best shot. I did everything I could to take care of my teeth as well. I'm talking about you as the patient. And you know what? 40 years later, I still have my teeth. That's about the best thank you that I as a doctor can receive.